Greetings and phenomenal welcome to all geeks and fans. You are now listening to Spectacular Inc. Radio, brought to you in part by Famous Radio Live, and we're so honored to have you here. I am your host, Andre Brown, and we're super excited to review movies, TV shows, comics, and all that geek fun. Yes! <laughs> yeah, I said we're all here today, you know what I'm saying? Ready to rock out. Um, of course, you know, and in the introduction, I am Andre Brown. We'll go around the table, uh, introduce everybody and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and uh, go to Big Jacks, you know what I'm saying? Steven, go ahead. <laughs> What's good, everybody? How you feeling? It's your boy, Big Jax, a.k.a. Benji, a.k.a. War Major, a.k.a. That Guy, Mr. Smooth, Mr. Cool. You can find me on Instagram at B-I-G underscore J-A-C-X. Like and follow. Uh, follow. Follow me on Facebook, Stephen Jackson. Yeah, that's about it. And you can find me here. <laughs> H2O, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, you might know who I am now because I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Consistent. The consistent. Oh, you saw you saw the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the questions. That's why I said the long love, questions. Um, yeah, you follow me. Biography. I'm at Tactical Bandy. I don't really post much, so I don't know why you want to follow me. But, you know, if you got time on your hands, go for it. <laughs> like, right. All right, here we go, Mr. Don. Social person. <laughs> it's Mr. Steal Your Chips um, <laughs> back on the street out of the snack box, you know? <laughs> Can't find me anywhere. In your mama's here. box. <laughs> on your mama's couch. <laughs> on your mama's couch, deep in your mama's box. <laughs> so, <laughs> chips. But, um, <laughs> your kitty box. Family show. Family show. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can find me here. You can find me behind the 7 Eleven, you know, probably talking to Mills, your mom, your aunties. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I play a bad guy on TV. Play a bum in real life. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, we definitely are so glad that you guys joined us for another episode. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's liking the consistency of the four of us, and they said they like our Before dynamic. You guys. So uh, we Mr. really Steel appreciate chips. that. <laughs> uh, also, so just want to let you guys know, so we will be posting the next day or two. Uh, we did the Tekken 8 party. Uh, we had a fantastic time. Uh, we're just editing the video now. So, um, and I know you guys did uh, did Giles video too and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. y'all record another one. If I'm able to come out, just let me know so we can do that. Yeah, and stuff, we got so. one this upcoming Friday. Okay. Yeah. Talk about I'm it. Just, I'm gonna just. All right. Go ahead. So, we are <coughs> filming uh, a series called D and D Bridge, where we're playing regular D and D. We use the rules as a guideline for playing. The rules are cool. And um, we're just having fun. I use, um, you know, the worlds and the lore, but everything is pretty much homebrew, taking place from other campaigns that I play with my friends off camera. And we get together, we have fun. If you're a D&D fan, you like it. If you're new to D&D, you like it. If you're a rules lawyer, not going to lie, it's probably going to piss you off <laughs> because we don't follow the rules to a T. But we keep it interesting. We do keep it interesting. We do keep it interesting. So, um... We we're filming, we just filmed episode three uh, for all three. Well, it's all one campaign, but I got three groups for antique mm-hmm. stories. Um, so we just wrapped up episode three for two of those. We got episode three coming up this Friday. We're about to film. Your boys are going to come out and support us. And uh, hopefully we get them on the table to throw some dice. <coughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, keep me in a loop, so make sure we get that taken care of. And uh, like they were saying, <coughs> it is going to be on the uh, Spectacular, Inc., uh, Spectacular Inc. Comics YouTube channel. Yep. Um, so you can be able to check that out for more content. So that's going to be great. And you know it'll what be dropping so. here. We'll probably drop the first episodes probably end of April, beginning of May. So look out for those. Definitely. So that's going to be another thing to look out for. Uh, so one, one of the uh, newer things that we're going to do as well, um, you know, right before we do our primary, uh, primary subjects, I did uh, talk with the, talk the fellas about this to let them know. So we're going to do what's called honorable mentions. So a lot of times, as you guys know, we talk about a lot of shows, we talk about a lot of movies, we talk about comics, and, and sometimes we get ch- you know, a chance to talk about gaming pod when they get a chance to game. So it's a lot. So they got to be, you know, prepped ahead. So I got to send notes like, you know, at least a week's or a week and a half out so they can get time to be able to watch the shows, things of that nature and stuff like that. So, of course, if they're getting it that early, then sometimes stuff drops in the middle of the week. You know what I'm saying? So honorable mentions is going to be a time where it's like something big. If I didn't get a chance to put it in a notes that we can go ahead and mention, <clears throat> we'll run, run those things down and then we'll just talk about what is our favorite thing that we want to talk about with it. So 
One of the honorable mentions, I did want to say an honorable mentions, mainly because uh, we are not going to have Gaming Pod on this segment because it's a lot of shows and a lot of movies that we're going to definitely be talking about and, of and course, comics. Yeah, and then we're doing Question Bag as well. So it's a lot that we, we were trying to do. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a, the Gaming Pod segment, the last segment that we normally do. However, in honorable mentions, I did want to talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yes, this is. Yes. You're in the geek sphere. This is. You know, I'm saying Paradise for us um, is one of the best games out for the. Uh, I would say in the top five, at least, going to be as of right now one of the best games that's out as of right now for 2024. Um, I have played at least the first 30 minutes to like an hour, some change. Of course, you know, y'all saw pre-review. They did see some of the graphics and some of the you know small gameplay mm -hmm. of it. Um, if you're a, a diehard like us, I mean, of course, we played the first one back on the, on the PlayStation. It was like a CD-ROM thing. It was like a mm. like a novel. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like a CD-ROM? I mean, a CD -ROM. I mean, you know, CD-ROM, you know, <laughs> and then thick like a novel and stuff like that. It was a lot of, a lot of <laughs> with it. But, of course, now the graphics are way better. Uh, so I said last night I was going to say something about that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to let you no, talk about it. No. I'm going to do my other honorable mention, too. But okay. go ahead. No, go ahead. You want to say something real quick. I was going to say... Um, the graphics on Rebirth look great, but um, I have one what? problem with the physics, though. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. I'm just saying, when a man's buster sword goes down past his ass and he sits on a water tower, you can't tell me that sword doesn't cut through the fucking tower. Oh, <laughs> he should have fell, damn it. <laughs> I've been knocked off. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing in honorable mentions, of course, the ca casting for Superman. So I'm going to announce that because that mm. was announced after. Uh, but before that, we're going to with it. Uh, <laughs> Never changed the name of Superman Legacy anymore, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying. Before I got to that, I was about to say the title change. So when James Gunn said on uh, Twitter or Threads, I forgot which one, which one it was. It doesn't matter. But um, he said um, when he really finalized the script, and of course they on set, he really felt like it just needed to be called Superman. Um, of course, they showed the new logo, which is reminiscent of the one from Kingdom, Kingdom Come. Come. Um, but, I mean, everybody's, oh, my God, it's going to be. No, he already, so it's already explained mm -hmm. that this is not an older Superman. He is like a year and a half at Daily Planet. He just left Smallville, maybe, you know, like, you know, almost yeah. three years ago. So he's just really getting his feet wet and, and reporting. So, no, they're not going to, oh, well, I've only been a hero for three years. Time to do Kingdom Come. That, does, that doesn't make sense. So he, he just, the logo. The, the, the symbol he decided to lean towards was more, you know, reminiscent of the one from King to Come, so which makes sense. But, the, of course, the other big news was uh, Wendell Pierce. Of course, he was from uh, Jack, not Jack Reacher. Lord, what's the other show that we love that uh, John Krasinski's in? It's on Amazon. Office? Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Jack Ryan. Thank you. Jack Thank you, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he, he's from there. So uh, Wendell Pierce has officially been cast as Perry White, editor in chief of the Daily Planet and James Gunn Superman movie. Of course, it's slated to release in July 11th, 2025. Which one's Wendell Pierce? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. The guy from, uh, from Jack Ryan. I don't oh, know if you yeah. saw the. I haven't seen Oh, Jack yeah. It's a really good show. Something. Show. Something. I like, I, oh, no. I don't he's know, he's in a. Uh, he plays a. Uh, Pop Henry or Snap Henry and uh, Power book. Oh, okay, Cannon. okay, okay. So, yeah, I know who he is. I just didn't know. Yeah, my fault. Because I, I, yeah, I know Jack Ryan. Because yeah. they are on the, like, their fourth season. I think they finished out fifth of fourth season of that now mm -hmm. at this point. So, mm -hmm. but how y'all feeling about, you know, the honorable mentions really quickly we'll go around? I know, we, I know you talked about the physics of Fantasy. <laughs> uh, but uh, the news about the casting and the name change for Superman, how you feeling? Um, well, I'm. I feel better about it than I did before as far as the Superman thing goes, just to keep it short because I know we don't have a lot of time. But uh, I'm going to wait to see. But so far, so good. It, for As far as the Kingdom to Come direction goes, from what I hear from my sources, like it's an adaptation because it's supposed to be like him coming to terms with being a superhero in this one. So I think there's going to be like, from what I heard, they might be trying to angle it as far as like, him being like a reluctant Superman or something like that. But we can get more into that later. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I know they just can't lean into the primary story because I'm like, he's not like 50 years old. So. Right. Yeah, you know so, saying? So, so people could like just kind of calm down. Of yeah, yeah exactly. Because like in that one, like he went away, superheroes were becoming all a-holes. But he already said superheroes exist in this one. So I think in this one, instead of him like coming to correct the problem, I think it's him like, all right, there are heroes, but... They can't handle whatever problems coming up, so they might need me. Or it might be a setup for a three 
Movie art, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the casting for uh, the Perry White. Um, I mean, I know, but oh, he's not white. I mean, it's bro, it's it's. It, I mean, he was played a, by Lawrence Fishburne exactly in the cares. other one, so mm-hmm. it's not a it's, it's not a relevant character. It's not like he's they're casting him to be what I don't know somebody else. I mean, like it's Jimmy not, Olsen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's not that serious, bro. But go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, how I you feel about the casting news? for for Perry White? Um, I like the style of characters, whatever he's played, like everything, like it fits in. I see him. Perfect. They could just kind of be like, "Don't give me no bullshit." Yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just like, oh, just like they did with um Jim Gordon for um the Batman. What's the, the newest one that just came yeah. out? You know what I'm saying yeah. they were like, oh, "Oh, he's black." I'm like, well, he played a great um well, now, Gordon. Now, now, for that, I do understand why people were like hesitant because Gordon is a staple character. You yeah, know what I mean, but Jeffrey Wright, I'm gonna give him his you know accolades because not only is he a great actor, but like. He's been playing like racially diverse characters forever. Like his first movie he was in was I think Shaft, and he played a Puerto Rican crime boss. Right? Oh, you know wow. what I mean? That's uh-huh. crazy. And I think he's, he's very diverse. And, yeah, I, he's and really I think he's biracial, so I don't want to sit there and be like he may be Spanish, he may not be. But you know, he can pull it off. He, though. Yeah, he's, he's done he's that. He's he played from from gangsters to like the smart guy, and you know the Hunger Games to he, Westworld. Uh, the Af- uh, American. Oh my God, Westworld um, was great. Yeah, I know he was. The, the, the recent one he just did, the American. Uh, American Hustle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so he has that look to where he can, He it's, it's funny how he can, he has to look to where he can be a gangster, then turn around and play the nerd. Yeah, yeah and I think <clears throat> for him as Jeff, Jeff, well, he is Jeffrey Wright. I think for Jeffrey Wright as uh, Commissioner Gordon, I think what helped him out is once people look past, like, the shock and awe of, oh, it's a different race or appearance, like, he has the acting capabilities to hold that down and ground that. He, has so. that, yeah. he can, has that like solemn demeanor. He can be like like his Westworld character, where yeah. he's kind of very like not yeah, really he, dry, but like very like serious and stern, yeah. and just kind of like yeah, he has a gravitas. And no bull. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably what got him the Commissioner Gordon. Roy. Yeah, I like, gotcha. Keep I it on him in Westworld. Gotcha. How do you feel about the honor? Short and sweet. I don't. What? I don't, you don't care like, about it. You no, don't like the, I don't. The, the guy for the casting for um, for the. Uh, no, I like him. He's cool. But, oh, okay. uh, anything with the Superman shit out. <laughs> just, just get out of here. <laughs> well, we'll get. We'll, we'll, of course, we'll review more in the movie come out next like I said, year. So. I just gotta wait to the. I'm like, wait till it come out. I'm, 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 I'm too much. I'm tired of all this real talk. I got you. Because, like I said, I'm still disappointed with Black Adam. <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right, let's go ahead and get to the. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to segment one. Of Boy course. Spectacling projects. I uh, did want to make an announcement. So Jonathan uh, Jamar takes on the cinematographer slash director of photography role for Death Wisher with uh, director Alan uh, Saunders. I did add him to the group chat not so long ago. Uh, we're definitely super excited about that because it, it, we're now honing in on getting the right pieces in place so that way the shows can be more streamlined, uh, making sure that the associates, you know, is, of course, is in good hands with Mr. Russ. Now we, you know, Mr. Like Mr. Mr. Alvin. Mr. Definitely. And Mr. Alvin, yeah, of course, uh, he's great. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you're the main antagonist for Death Wish, so it's going to be great. And, of course, you know, we're doing the stuff for Mason. We've got the meeting coming up soon. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of stage play. So it's a lot of stuff that's going on. But I wanted to share that great news that we for have you guys. Y'all, so. y'all stay tuned. We got good stuff for y'all. Yeah, definitely. Hmm? I was asking if you wanted me to read these. Too. Oh, no. Uh, you can read the questions. Question bag. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and do segment two, movie corner. Let's jump into it, baby. Topic one: yeah. uh, Doom Part Two, movie review info. Paul Atreides unites with uh, Cheney. Uh, am I saying it, Cheney? And uh, the and, and and the Freeman Fremen. 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 <laughs> while seeking revenge against the co- the corresponders, Cor- uh, conspirators. A conspirator. Sorry about that. Uh, who destroyed his family? Facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the universe, he must prevent a terrible future only he can foresee. All righty. So three of us saw it. I know. I've been busy. So I, wow. So, okay. So, no, I mean, because I, I, I mean, everybody's going to know because then they're going to be like, it only came out Friday. What's your problem, bro? <laughs> Man, come on now. Well, it really? came out Thursday. So. It only yeah, came well, out yeah. Thursday. What's your problem? <laughs> you had a whole extra day. <laughs> No excuses. <laughs> but anyway, um, so of oh course, I mean, I, if you saw, we had a straight out of the theater uh, reaction. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, it's 10 out of 10, five stars, five, you call it cans of soda, whatever. All no. Of, what? It's 10 chicken nuggets <laughs> out of 12 nachos. <laughs> Perfect. Yo, this movie, every frame, it just a painting. speaks 
regalness to its maximum capacity. The fight scene between him and Austin Butler. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Uh, Butt kiss. What? Butler. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't don't do this. Oh yeah, when they were riding the words into the circle, so it was crazy, bro. Word. Crazy, life changing, bro. Word. Did you that need fight? Paul Atreides in the movie Tremors, man. Yo, right? Word exactly, word. man. <laughs> I, there's there's not enough words <laughs> of greatness. That was man. crazy. That was wild. I, um, yeah. The, and then um, just uh, oh yo, the color palette. With the black sun, that you can see them in color, and it yeah, changes this when you go outside. Yeah, it was like my face. It was, like, hey. it was a black sun, like, okay. <laughs> black but, uh, sun. But yeah, that black and white change and stuff like that. Well, but uh, like like <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah, man. laughs> yo, not ninja. What's good? You know sound guarding? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, Tell us how you thought. How you feel. takes place in like a desert environment and everything. Like it's still vibrant. And that's like the beauty of like the cinematography and everything in this movie. It's like there's so much range in like at the same time a very limited like color palette of the movie, which is interesting. Definitely. How, I mean, what's your other impressions? How you feel about the movie as a collector? Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I was just kind of really taken back by the cinematography. It was <laughs> it was <just> gorgeous. So. <laughs> yeah, acting was exceptional. Yeah. I mean, everybody brought like their A plus game. So and it's great if you saw it in IMAX. Yeah, right. I saw it, I saw it in, in Dolby. I saw it in Dolby Prime. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw it. So yeah, go ahead, yeah. talk about how you feel about so it. So basically, it this movie is like a it's an a event. newer version of uh, what was that movie where they were just fighting in the desert? No, it, no, it's based off the book, Dune. The book? I thought it was yeah. a video game. No, no, no. no. It's a book. <laughs> <It was> 28. <laughs> go, go ahead, Melinda. What, 79 or whatever was the original? Uh, Somewhere yeah. It was 84? 83? Yeah, it was like Mel Gibson yeah. when he played it? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, my little <laughs> He's the like Thunderdome. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, the, the first one, Mel Gibson was in it, and no. then he was in the desert. No. And go, they were fighting ahead, for water and stuff. Look, man. <laughs> the movie was great. And did he just get water world thrown in there, too? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my but, uh, No, the movie was great. Uh, the cinematography was awesome. I will say this. Uh, the I don't often say this enough, but, like, the audio scape of the movie, because, like, the sounds were crisp and clear, and the soundtrack's phenomenal. But like when we were talking about like that fight scene earlier, where there's like no audio and it's just like letting you breathe, it's almost like the fight scenes within that Gina Carano movie called Haywire, where like it's just brutal and vicious, and I and I love it. Yeah, like that fight scene was incredible, yeah. bro. Like, and you you, you wanted to it. feel it. Scrub. You wanted to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you, if you want our recommendation, I mean, definitely go see that IMAX, Dolby Prime. It, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, uh, so definitely. This, so this is like part three of Mad Max. Yes. All right. Um, so no. Like Mad Max so let's Dune. go. Let's yes. go to let's go oh, to the great, next great, topic. Great, great. Let's go to the next All topic. Right. Uh, so um, yeah, we didn't we didn't see that. So I'm gonna skip that one. So oh, we didn't. <laughs> no, nobody did. So I mean, we're oh, all busy. I, so uh, you, you saw that? You saw that one? No. Hell no. Nah. Nah, you funny. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next topic. So, uh, John Wick spinoff movie, Ballerina, delayed. What? What? Wow. <laughs> if, uh, delay? Ballerina has been delayed to 2025 in order to improve the movie's action. Efforts to make Ballerina more like a traditional John Wick movie uh, make John Wick 5 with Keanu Reeves more likely. John Wick 5 could premiere in 2027 at the earliest, but most likely 2028. Director of Underworld filmmaker Lynn Wiseman, Ballerina will feature Anna de Armas, Keanu Reeves as Wick, as well as Andrea Luca. Andrea uh, Luca Houston. Yeah, Houston. Gabriel uh, Byrne. Byrne, and the late Lance Riddick, uh, Catalina Sanendo, and uh, Marino, and then Norman Reedus, and Ian McShane. EW understands that Chad Skaliski, uh, did I say it right? Skaliski. Skaliski, uh, who helmed all four John Wick films, is working with Wiseman on an additional action sequences, with the principal having agreed that more time was, desi was desirable to complete the film. It's a lot of information. Um, basically, Anna Armas, which she was absolutely. Phenomenal and gorgeous in the latest uh, the the um, James Bond movie. Mm -hmm. um, of course, she showed her chops. So like, yeah, um, that ballerina movie. Uh, Y'all don't have to worry about nothing because I think she had like literally had gotten casted before that movie dropped, 
and everybody was like, "We don't really see her action." And then she showed uh, showed off her behind in, in a beautiful way yeah. in uh, in that new uh, James Bond movie, No Time to Die. And I think she's gonna be a perfect fit for this franchise. Um, I'm actually glad that they are delaying it. I mean, if they need more time, if they need to, I, I don't don't rush out, a, don't shove shove war project. This is in the John Wick universe. If we're getting exceptional action in John Wick one through four. You know what I'm saying? You got Donnie Yen. You got all these different, you know, Common was in the second one. Like, people who are taking their acting and their action seriously. Uh, you know, Lawrence Fishburne. You know, you, you don't want to just be like, oh, well, we'll just slap this together. No, no, no. If it's going to be part of that franchise, you need to take this and put and treat it with the same respect as well. It's a female-led movie. Give her the respect that's due. Uh, she's a powerful actress. So, I'm glad they delayed it. I can't wait to see more action, more choreographed. Uh, structure. Hopefully, it's like the fight scene, like in Dune and stuff like that. Uh, because I'm, I've been, it's been great. You know, when the last one with Donnie Yen, man, that it's yeah. awesome. You know what I'm saying? So, how y'all feeling about the news and stuff? How you feeling about this? Um, so I'm feeling good because when I heard about it, I initially had reservations, but then the more I looked into it, it was along the lines of them because it wasn't anything to do with like writing or studio involvement. It was basically like them trying to button up the action scenes because from what I heard, they felt it didn't have enough action. And then I think they wanted to crank up the action that they did have to 11 because they, they, from what I've gathered, my sources were telling me that the scenes that they had didn't feel like a John Wick film, but it didn't mean like it was bad action. It just didn't have like that over the top because even though John Wick is a action series, it's still like the stunt man's movie because they have all the references from Buster yeah. Keaton from the first one all the way through to like the last one that just came out. Well, then right. the, the, um, cinematic world or whatever that they've built you know on top of all these great action scenes you have like such a interesting world that's been developed you know through the continental hotels and the traveling and then even you know look at how i really enjoyed the uh the peacock spin-off like the continental, the continental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun um just getting that origin story of the main hotel there and everything else and like dipping your toe into that world and seeing kind of like how it started like there's so much you can branch off into like yeah so much yeah. into the world like the only thing you're missing right now is a john wick prequel to see how you got to to the point where you got you know out of the game and married right yeah yeah that's all i think that's the only thing that we're missing maybe they might do that five maybe they may yeah to because more. i feel like with five especially if they're pushing out that far because i love keanu reeves but he's not getting any younger so yeah. if they were to push up to and because the way it four ended, it's ambiguous. You can either believe he survived or believe he died. You know. Yeah. So, it goes so away. they could really well what they could do, which would be interesting. Which you guys are uh, <laughs> What they could do is like look difference. You know what I mean? Have John Wick Five take place after four. We see where he's like surviving, living, and maybe, maybe he's entertaining like another woman or something, and then they're out like trying to figure out like where he came from and shit and then he tells like a flashback story about how he got that's there. the premise going to the sequel prequels mm -hmm. yeah okay Cause, cause, I, get, I, I, mean, cause I would say he could probably talk to his kid but his wife's dead so he it'd be weird for him to just randomly have a kid all of a sudden so yeah. i feel like he would either be talking right. to maybe the ballerina chick homeboy's daughter yeah you, oh, you yeah. know what i mean because mm -hmm. you know i think i think they really need at least about three more films and I think the final film should be him either joining the high table or killing the high table. I wouldn't say joining. He would have to become the high table at that point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Either either they he gets rid of him or he joins him. Yeah. You know but I mean? and it's crazy because I, I you know saying to the to the ending of him like you say ambiguous yeah. ending it was the same thing with Lawrence Fishburne character. Cause I thought he died. Yeah, and then he you just see him in the opening. And I'm like, oh, so he's yeah, alive. He's punching, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so he's like, he's wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, um, shoot, man. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. think that you know, like I say, it's so many worlds they can make with John Wick. But like I said, I just, I just want to, you know, I want to see where it, where it goes from here. If gotcha. they do the oh. prequel, though, I would like to see one where him and. Um, and I'm drawing a blank. I'm having like, Come on, Donnie Yen's character. No. Okay. Well, you know, well, they were, I would, they were I would friends. Like, yeah, they were yeah, friends. but yeah, the other guy, the 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 oh, that's what I'm saying. Homegirl's father. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Old dude from uh, Shogun. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember his name that's right my now. Guy, but like, because yeah. the three of them grew up. But yeah. like, them two specifically, since they had such a tight bond in the movie, I would love to see a prequel of them like carrying out that work. 
You know, talking about um, 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 the cat from Shogun? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I haven't seen Shogun, so there's no put a reference. No, uh, 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 Scorpio. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my dude, bro. Yeah, he real cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go. Huh? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, let's go to go to the next topic. Uh, so Henry Cavill in the MCU. What? Uh, Henry Cavill has been rumored, and uh, that's a, the the key word, rumored to be cast in a mysterious role in the MCU, with some suggesting he could portray the Fantastic Four Doctor Doom. Henry Cavill has previously expressed interest in portraying a modernized, ver- a modernized version of the Marvel Comics' Brian uh, Bardock, a.k.a. Captain Britain. All right, so it's a rumor. I mean, most likely it's probably true. Can I see him as a Doctor Doom? I don't really know. I had to really... Mm, I'm kind of... Eh, mm, 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 no. I, I think I'd rather have him as a villain than... You mean as a is a is a hero than a villain or yeah, a villain? Yeah. Uh, yeah, villain than a hero. Like you know, he was Superman in DCU, so to me, he's still kind of that. So like, if we get him on the other side of the table, I think it could really bring. Some yeah, cool, like, actually, like, actually he's, he's like, a better villain than he did in Fallout. Yeah. I was about to I was about to say I was about to say did you did you, yeah. you see how how you did in Fallout and stuff like that? That because you know the, the real movie. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 um <laughs> yo that one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, dude, he had to read yeah. like, the arm guns, bro. Yeah, that joint was crazy. Right, like yeah. that was a meme for like yo, that, that bathroom <laughs> scene. Yo, he bro. beat Cruz's ass. Yo, that huh? Tom Cruise. No, 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 no. Yeah. You're talking about when him and him and Henry Cavill had to team up to fight the Asian guy in the bathroom scene. They were fighting the Asian guy. Asian guy was beating the crap out of they were both fighting of each them. Other first. That, that's at the end. That's after the helicopter crashes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were on the edge of the, uh, you know edge of the mountain. You know how long ago that movie came out, man? Yeah, it's been a few <laughs> years because then the next one came out. But yeah, yeah. yeah, the bathroom scene was when they fought the Asian yeah, guy. Yeah, they killed him in the bathroom store. Yeah, because and then the Asian guy ripped the pole out of the daggone wall and was trying to cut him with it. That junk was crazy, bro. Yeah, I feel like yeah. the, the Captain Britain that's kind of like Hey, we're sorry that you lost Superman, like consolation yeah. prize kind of thing. So, like, if you give him a villain role, like it's different. It's separate. Like, you know, come be, come, come to the table. Do you see him as uh, Doctor Doom? Or what, what, what were you thinking? If, I mean, if you're saying that you want to play a villain, do you see him as that or another villain? Um, I could see him as Doctor Doom. I mean, like, you know, because he'll be masked up, or however they're going to do that version of Doom, and then um, I think he can work off his presence and everything else, and like. I think he could do some cool stuff, just kind of like Brolin did with Thanos and everything else, you know. Some people saying Cyclops. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How I you mean, feeling about the news? So, and stuff, but, yeah. um, if I hope he gets it in the MCU, but um, to Andrew's point, I'd rather see him as a villain because when I was reading up ahead, I was like, yeah, no, nah, I I don't want to see him as like Captain Britain. That seems too on the nose. Well, it's too on the nose. And then for those who follow the What If series, you almost would think they would just give it to Peggy Carter anyway, yeah. since she's still active and they could just bring the What If series over. But um, no, I would I would love to see him as Doctor Doom because I think, one, he has the range for it. Two, I know he would have a lot of fun doing it. But really, like, to see Henry Cavill, like, mask on, mask off, but in that like, <laughs> man, it's gone. yeah, because I mean, Doctor Doom's not always wearing his mask, right, but it's yeah. just like he's imposing enough, especially when you stack him up against a Pedro Pascal yeah. and the rest of the guys. Like, it would make sense. You know, and we know he does his homework. Yeah, that too. Exactly. He's, he's a true certified nerd. nerd. He's through a certified nerd. nerd. So I feel like yeah, give him that role. But if he wasn't going to play Doctor Doom, and he was going to come into the MCU. As a villain, I have two picks I would place him as, and he might be controversial. I would either have him, the audio. Oh, so you hear that? My yeah, bad. yeah, I was telling you I was hearing it earlier. Okay. But, um, oh, my bad. Yeah, I would think he would be a good Galactus. Okay. Or, Psych. or even on a smaller scale, I could see him. Because I almost said Silver Surfer, but I don't want to, you know, put him in that role unless, you know, they regulate him doing his anti-hero arc. But I would see him as, like, Galactus or even, like, um, if they wanted to do, um, because the Beyonder was supposed to be Kang anyway. So if they wanted to separate that part, maybe. Gotcha. How you feeling, Steven, about the news with Henry Cavill? Possibly. It's a rumor. 
So you're not Superman? No. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Everybody flip flop between DC. They might as well just come together and just have a little three way, I guess. <laughs> Gross. And I'm like, yo, because everybody flip flopping and well, we're going to take this guy and we're going to do this here and switching and, you know, just, just join them. DC Marvel. Funny. <laughs> like, you can yo. say that about any actors, though. Actors no, I'm talking about flopping studios. Well, I mean, majority of the time is between the two heavy hitters, though. Marvel and uh, DC aren't the only studios. Who? Actually, you got Sony, like the same studio. Lionsgate, <laughs> um, <laughs> Monkey Paw Pitches. You know, I can lay well, no, my universals. <laughs> they, they, they join, right? They No, the two companies, they join together, right? Come on, DC and uh, Warner Brothers? No, no, no. He's saying, like, other actors being other stuff. But I'm like, majority of the time, when it's heavy hits like that, they join together, though. Come on, like, Disney buy, buying Marvel? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no like, you know, the uh, the Fox and whatever. Oh, Disney bought Fox. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so it's a merge. So, of course... Uh, you mean a monopoly? Is that the word you're looking for? You know, but, yeah, that, that's, that sums it up. back playing Hollywood, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, uh, nah. They, I mean, if they gonna keep, you know, just grabbing each other's actors and stuff, yo, just just be one whole thing. I guess I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's man, monopolies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might as well. Everybody else doing it. Hell, uh, eight, the, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, well, shit. Uh, T-Mobile and uh, what's the, who, who just joined? Uh, the two brands well, just joined uh, together. Uh, T-Mobile bought Sprint. Yeah. So I mean, shit. Well, you still, well, you still, because you still got AT and T, you got T Mobile, and then you have, uh, but you get you, Verizon, yeah. But a lot of companies are merging, though. Heavy hitters too, though. In the words Heavy of George hitters. Collin, we don't, we don't have any choices. They're all owned by one asshole. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's but go nah, to the, go ahead, bro. Oh yeah, let's go Man. to the next topic. Uh, so Borderlands movie trailer. Let's go. Year review. <clears throat> After returning to her home planet Pandora and infamous outlaw Lilith is given a dangerous mission and forms an alliance and potential friendship with other criminals, including former mercenary Roland. Uh, d- Thank you. I appreciate that. There it is. Uh, yeah. Tina, t- uh, Tina, 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 Tiny, Tiny, Tina, 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 and her protector Craig, Krieg, Krieg, insane scientist Tannis, and Tannis. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the wise cracking robot clap trap. Clap ba ba clap. clap. <laughs> anyway, the mission find and protect the missing and important uh, daughter of a very powerful man named Atlas. Although things may not be as they seem, as the girl holds the key to great power, one that can change the fate of the entire universe. Release date is August 9th, 2024. Right now, with this trailer that I saw, it is it, it could literally go both ways. It could be yeah, a, it's just right it, down the middle. It, yeah, it could be it's a another, it could be another Dungeons and Dragons. It's a right where now. I was like, oh man, mean? no, no, because remember, like, I a pleasant surprise. The, the trailer was like, oh, what do you mean by that? No, yeah, okay. what do you mean by that? So what I'm saying is that because I looked at the trailer for Dungeons and Dragons before it came out, and I was just like, oh, oh okay, I guess. Uh, yeah. movie yeah. is it's legendary. It's, 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 it was in my top ten. It was like like number Blue number three way. or four. So it was a yeah, it was a phenomenal movie. So um, it could go that way, or it could literally just be another Madam Web. So I don't, I don't think, think anything can beat Madam Web. I don't know, point. man. Because when I saw um, the trailer, yeah. I was oh, okay. Let me look at your trailer. When I saw the tra- trailer, I was half on, and then when I saw Kevin Hart's goofy little ass <laughs> as <laughs> Roland, yeah. who's like my height and built, bro. I'm like. Look, could have got you. Like, you know what I mean? We you know got, what I'm saying? I got Big Daddy Jacks over here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's, got, yeah. he's got time. Yeah, I got time. Mm-hmm. I guess <laughs> they wanted to make it funny. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Mr. Consistent just got here. But, uh... <laughs> 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 my month might be over, but it's never over. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, nah, man. Like, outside of, like, aesthetics, I don't know. It, like you guys said, it could either be... A surprise and really good, Dungeons Dragons. or it could be like straight to the DVD bin at a Walmart, man. Morbius. Yeah, it could be a this, All <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Don't even mention this. Yeah. It's not crazy. <laughs> I'm oh. depressed now. <laughs> he so said we'll, RE. Yeah, we're gonna see. We'll, we'll definitely see. What, what do you think about the trailer? How you felt? Yeah, like? I mean, I'm. It was so weird because like when I first saw like 
teasers or whatever, like before I actually watched the full trailer, like a day or two before, I was like, wait, this is a real thing? This is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me see what's going on here. Watch the trailer. I'm like, all right, like, Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be interesting. Like, she's got this weird, like, resurgence in movies, like, Sometimes doing a little bit of action-y stuff. Sometimes just just being like the old guard, and, you know, coming in. Well, I say she's fairly consistent yeah, yeah. throughout the years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, otherwise I think some of the cast mm. will be fun. Jack Black is Claptrop. That's going to be fun. I, I still know. don't understand why didn't you just get the original voice actor since it's all voiceover work anyway. That's true, too. I don't know. Yeah. You know, probably. Like, new audience, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, or they or, figured, like, we get a little bit more... Butts and seats, you know, with Jack Black. I don't Big know. names, I guess. Oh, or probably somebody. Because okay, so I mean, this is turning out to be like Jumanji, but not as fun. No, I'm but look how good Kevin Hart was at Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, Yo, like, so I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you. I got Jumanji vibes from this. I'm just like, yeah. it's just Jumanji, but it's another fucking video game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you an example. So you know, remember the scene when uh, Matt Damon was in uh, uh, Matt Thor Damon. Ragnarok? No, in which one? Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, oh, yeah where he played Loki. No, no. Yo. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 in, yeah, in, in yeah. the acting part, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that was a phone call. He was just like somebody. He's cool with. I think he cool with. Um, uh, oh yeah, he cool with Kurt Cousins. And yeah. they was just like, "Yo, you know what'd be funny if we got?" He was like, "Yo, remember? and they asked him, was like, "Yo, Matt, what you doing?" He was like, uh, "Sam Neil." Yeah, he was like, like "Yo, you just, I'll come out on set for a couple of days. I ain't doing that right and now." Did you know the guy who was playing Thor was another Hemsworth brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so the one. crazy thing no, is the oldest one. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, so the crazy thing is, like what you were saying, as far as like the the Jack Black thing, it could have been somebody on second, but like, yo, oh, we get Jack Black down here, yo. like, yeah, he probably made a phone call. It was like, yo, you want to come out and do this? I ain't doing that. Come on, you know what I'm saying? So I, I get that. Right, 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 I'm not trying to sound like I don't like Jack Black. No, no, no. I know you know. I was just trying to use as an example. Like sometimes I know some stuff happens because it's because of phone calls. People like, yeah, and they're like, just come out here for a couple days. Nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the trailer? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Uh, what'd you think? I didn't. Kevin Hart's in it, so now I'm just No. Uh, yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, like I said, it could be a hit or miss. Uh, they just got to keep the nostalgia. If they, I think they do that, they can keep nostalgia, but also have like a new twist to bring new fans and also the uh, the OGs of the game. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, like... Uh, like, don't get me wrong, like, I, like say, for instance, Street Fighter. At least they got the characters that look like the characters from the game. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it brought me in to that it. That movie's great. You know what I'm saying? It's the 90s one with all yeah. John Claude. Rest yeah. in yeah. peace yeah. to Ronald Jr. Real talk. I will say John Claude messed up some of his scenes because he was high off coke, but as a kid, <laughs> it made it fun to watch. But he looked like God, though. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he made him did. look like him. You know? Yeah. yeah. So Old dude look like bison, a scary bison. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know what I'm saying? The only so, thing, the only, the only thing I like about that movie was the whole Ryu thing. I'm just like, bro, if you want, if you won't gonna give me the blue energy, why you just do that flash on the screen? And I was like, he's like, da da da. You gotta I'm think like, about the man. Like, you gotta think about like, the graphics though, because it would either came out really cool, like Big Trouble in Little Tokyo, mm-hmm. or it yeah, right. came out really, really bad, bad. <laughs> like uh. What was it? Dark crystals or some shit? Oh, Probably gotcha, like, gotcha. Okay. Where it looks like Jim Hessen threw a blue light across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that. Or That's like that TV show Ghost Rider could have came out like that. Like, yeah, so <laughs> my question to all of y'all, have you ever in y'all lifetime actually played Borderlands at all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't and, assault uh, me. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just I'm asking. So the next question would be, do you feel like the, just by trailer... Did it capture any of the primary essence of what the Borderland games experiences that you had were? From what I've seen, uh, vaguely, vaguely, like the over the top, the over the topness for sure. Um, Explosions. I stuff. like how the psychos look, the vehicles look. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Some of the characters, with the exception of the one, look like their <laughs> characters the aesthetically, but. I until I see the movie, I, there's not enough for the trailer for me to see if they actually embody the characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what about you? Yeah, I think it's probably like a fifty-fifty. Like, you have some of the high points there, so like certain things you can kind of instantly recognize and see, and like kind of has that vibe. But other things, like obviously, they have certain constraints or whatever else that you're trying to work around or figure out how to do. So we'll see. I mean, I think. Part of it is like casting wise, like you look at the characters from the game, like, you know, you're trying to get those 
the cartoon caricature, you know, translation into like people. So maybe that's why we have. I mean, I forgive that, but I yeah. mean, we'll see. When you yeah. drop two feet off a motherfucker, <laughs> <little smoke. laughs> I gotcha. All right, so uh, segment three, spotlight of the day. So, <clears throat> if you are a person, yeah, you know, especially mainly, you know, of course, in Virginia, or you have a small, <laughs> a small business or a project you like to promote, want to be a part of promoting that on this segment, you would just email us at spectacularingradio at gmail dot com. Drop your information; we can definitely connect and see about putting you on the spotlight of the day on segment three. So, yeah. all right, let's jump to segment four, Comic Central. Um, you go ahead and get ready to hold that up, Melendez. I appreciate you. We are talking topic one. It's Ultimate Spider-Man number two, Ultimate. Marvel Comics. Uh, info, <clears throat> the most surprising Spider-Man story of the 21st century continues. Spider-Man faces his first super villain, J. Jonah Jameson's quest to uncover who is really pulling the strings for the new Ultimate Universe leads to a shocking revelation. And New York City welcomes its newest hero, the Green Goblin. This story is turning out remarkable. They are still continuing the, you know, the trace of greatness for it. I did like, I like the grittiness of how the imagery is. Um, right now, of course, we got the, you know, he's wearing the black suit, but it's not the black suit. In a sense, something like that, it's like gray. Um, no, no. It's, it's the black suit. It's just not a venom suit. <laughs> yeah, like, aesthetically, he's just like, you know what? I'm feeling emotional today. I'm gonna listen to my oh, romance suit. and make it all black. Sad mm -hmm. suit. It's, it's, sad it, suit. I, it's, yeah, I think it's probably nanotech, if I'm not mistaken, and stuff like that, because it does the depression you know, move and stuff suit. like that. So, well, I didn't know um, we could say that for copyright. I don't want to get sued by Mr. Stark. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Stark Enterprise is coming down. But um, I can't pay the bills. Did y'all get a chance Stark? to gloss on it? And it's kind of no, looking a little bit through it now, just stuff like that. Oh, no, okay. I, I definitely want to read this, but I have not read it yet or read, read it. it. Yeah, I got yeah. you. Read it because okay, that number one was was exceptional. Like it was. I, I, it I was caught caught me because you know how we've been with these stupid Marvel one number ones. I was like, bro. I'm... And then we read. It, I was like, yo. But of course, I mean, of course, it's Hickman, bro. So I mean. What do you expect, bro? Hickman is, is on fire right now. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, I am pleased with him. It's almost as if he should be writing all these other Marvel books, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if, you, if you want our recommendation, this is right now. If you're, if you if, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to say. If you're a new person, like as far as like comic book, you know, like, oh, I don't know what there's so much going, you know, if you're kind of like overwhelmed, whatever like that, definitely go to the comic book stores, ask for Spy Ultimate Spider-Man number one, and of course number two is out. This is a great, to me, it's a great segue to learn about Spider-Man. You know, I haven't been overwhelmed by like, I don't know, they're probably on like 900 now at this point of Spider-Man, so it's well, like, but you got and that could, be over, that could be overwhelming to somebody. But know? I will nah. say that, to, to <laughs> piggyback off your point, since I did read the first one, I will say, especially if it's an introduction to Spider-Man, if you're a new person who happens to be older, you could probably relate to this too because he's not the kid in the, uh, yeah, high school not the or college. Yeah. Right, right, right. Is that, and I like that new approach. It was like a fresh take. Right. It's a new approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know, we, we got the we got the Into the Spider Verse movie, so we got more for those for <gasps> kids. You think he'll be in the third one now? This Spider-Man. Oh, you never know. I, I, I don't. I don't think you know. They were already right. They already wrote the script. They're just doing the. The graphics the and visuals. stuff. Yeah, for, I know. For, I'm just, yeah, I know. It'd, it'd have been cool though. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe they might turn this into a show. Or, you know, or maybe turn it into a show. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Sony might be like, you know, let's let's. Pick this. So maybe like I don't want Sony to touch it. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, they they they're the ones that did the Into the Spider Verse, and, and that's phenomenal, bro. Yeah, but that's a movie. We're talking about a TV show. Have you seen a Sony TV show? Um, maybe I I don't know because because well, I don't know who which shows they're you know they do shows and then they Nobody drop it on different. Uh, you funny. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull up the next mm -hmm. one, topic two. Comment, you'll be like, Melinda, yeah. these are all the great Shoney shows. Up there, like yeah, I know. You're going to be like, oh, oh like, surprise to be Warrior. You're like, all right, bro. Don't say that. These are going to really right. take back. This be like, boom. <laughs> 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 all right, topic two, you want to hold that. Uh, Superman Action Comics 1062. Of course, another writer on fire, Jason, uh, Jason Aaron. <laughs> Which is actually a segue to um, Andre Brown now. <laughs> uh, uh, DC Comics uh, info. Trapped in the city of Bizarro, the shocking second chapter of the worst Bizarro story ever. Jason Aaron's first time writing Superman sees the Man of Steel trapped in a world gone mad. A metropolis transforming the city of Bizarro while
while Superman struggles to save the lives of people who despise him, he's also battling the most powerful bizarro of all, the one inside his own mind. It is crazy. Um, whoever did the notes for this, though, because uh, I did just, you know, get the notes from as far as, like, when they was review- reviewing for the comic. Did they do uh, an, anime version, or an animation version of this? No, they have not. This is brand new. This is a new story arc. Okay. But I will say, Jason, I, I don't... line sounds almost familiar. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's a new take, but um, Jason, I, that I don't think that's right though. I think Jason Aaron has written for Superman before, if I'm not, because I have a long box at home that has a lot hey, of comics and stuff. He got so that wow. long box. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, that's as wild. As, <laughs> but um, but as far as the story is concerned, I do like it. Um, right now, of course, you know he's dealing with Lois Lane mentally being jacked up. Did you get a chance to gloss through this, or you did? They got like the Joker I, I, I on this joint, like though. So why are you doing that? It sounds familiar. <laughs> That's not the Joker. So I huh? might, I might have read it on my own because it sounds familiar. Okay, I like, got gotcha. you. The way you're describing it. So but yeah, um, but I do, I do love the the new take. I like the whole magical element dealing with Bizarro. Um, I, I think uh, Jason, they said he has a, he has a way of being able to highlight um, the characters and really honing in on breaking down what is more important, you know, saying than, than just like having the powers. It's, mm-hmm. it's more folk character centric and ele- having the powers elevate the story with what he's writing, and that's very very hard to do. He has he has sharp uh, dialogue writing, which I definitely respect. That um, I feel like the direction he's going is something that's going to be fresh and new when it actually comes to a lot of his uh, taking the, you know the older villains and trying. Trying to you know do something you know fresh with it, and I think the new take with this whole bizarre world, people being like, "Oh, he saved him," uh, and they didn't get mad because you know it's supposed to be backwards, so it's, uh, he's getting mad for yeah. saving folks. They get mad for him saving people, and it's they, you know it's, it's crazy. It's it's really backwards. So you because yeah. you're trying to keep but up. I mean, it's literally bizarre. Yeah, exactly. Man, so. so the whole world of dealing with that, I think it's fun. I think it's cool, uh, and I guess that's why a lot of people are excited there because you know he's going to be taking over the Ninja Turtles in June. Like he's doing oh, the new. We, we can talk about. That. We celebrated that, we celebrated that uh, yeah, episode before. I didn't before. know if it was like a uh, concrete. So yeah, it's, it's, it's solidified. Yeah, it's okay. solidified. So it'll be sometime in June for that. All right, last topic for this segment. Uh, topic three, Rebel Moon, House of the Blood Axe, number two, Titan Comics. The moon surrives Info. again. <laughs> As war is looming on the horizon on the planet Sharu, uh, the reluctant ruler of the uh, ba- uh, Blood Axe family is conflicted between living up to his father's uh, domineering legacy and maintaining the peace. It is up to him to settle the conflicts within himself and his family before the entire planet erupts into war. Um, the illustration is uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, I, I liked the, it was a little bit of a sharper um, in the last one, um, I think this one they kind of got, well, you know. Um, but I, for me, I think that the story is rich enough to continue going. Um, it is good to learn, to learn about the, you know, the Blood Axe family. Um, you know, the two characters that, you know, they, they didn't get much screen time in the actual, you know, first movie. Uh, mainly because, you know, when we saw the brother die, the guy that played uh, Cyborg. Yeah. But it, it, it's really good to really dive in and figure out, okay, what specifically caused them to be who they are? You know what I'm saying? Like, especially part of the main story, giving them this backstory for, you know, for Moon and figuring out, like, what's uh, significant, what's important to their family. So I think they're doing a good job dialogue-wise and writing-wise. They're still doing good. I wish the, uh, the, the illustration could be a little bit sharper. But besides that, I, I, I still think it's a good read. So I, I think, you know, I'm still reading it. That's why I'm still, still reading on number two. So I think it's a, it's a good pickup. So. All right, let's go ahead and go to segment five, streaming lifestyle, a lot to go over. Woo. All right. <clears throat> Topic one, Ninja Kamui. Kamui, am I saying that right? Kamui. Kamui. Uh, season one, episodes one through four review, Max. So, uh, Ninja Kamui follows Joe Logan, voiced by Jeremy Gee, uh, a former ninja living in hiding in a rural America with his family to escape his past. But when his old clan attacks, seeking vengeance for his uh, leaving, oh, for his leaving, they murder, uh, uh, leaving, We're leaving, they murder his family. Yeah, I think they, this is a typo. I apologize it's about that. Obama, that's all. Uh, yeah, I got you. Appreciate that. Uh, Joe survives the attack and vows revenge against those who took his loved ones from him. All right, so action is absolutely exceptional. Um, just, I mean, it's like, like I was saying, it was like a mixture between like Naruto meets kind of like Dragon Ball Z, very, very light on the Dragon Ball Z fighting aspects, but you know what I'm saying? But more even with the, you know, Naruto and stuff like that. I'm not even going to lie. Cause yesterday when you said that I was like hype, but then when I saw what I saw last night, I would say it puts Naruto to shame as far as the action goes. Oh, Cause, wow. No, no. Cause like, we're talking about like fight scenes and actions yeah. and anime. I would probably... There's a couple of them I'd probably put it on par with, but like, 
Yeah, the, I I wouldn't watch this with your kids, man. They 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 throw down. They're it's almost like it has like the violence of Gans as far as like blood and gore, but like yeah. the action. It's almost like watching, ooh, cartoon version of John Wick with ninjas. Yeah, because they they get down. They get down. Yeah, so, that's yeah. Not crazy. Yeah. I, I really love it. Um, yo, Holy fo- crap, it's almost like an anime John Wick, if you think about it, except to kill his family instead of his dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That John was crazy, yo. Uh, Asian John Wick. Because the ninjas are the high table, if you think about it. Yeah, that's yeah, not crazy. I approve this episode. They, and the big guy <laughs> with the sword with the dress, like, he was like... Leroy? Freaky. Oh, no, that's <laughs> Tekken. <laughs> it's funny. Stupid. Oh, did you... Uh, from what I you just, checked out, what you've seen... Like, and, watching that... Trailer overview, the we, overview that we watched. Um, I'm excited. I want to watch it. Yeah, and I like it because it's on Max. If you have uh, HBO, oh, it's not HBO Max anymore. It's just Max. If you have that, <laughs> you, uh, of course, it's on Adult Swim. If, if, if you have regular TV, it's on Adult Swim. Um, and the one thing I do love, of course, we will be reviewing this, is because it drops weekly. So weekly episodes. These episodes, because I'm actually kind of late. It dropped a, a week before. Uh, my boy Jacob, you know, shout out to him. He actually was, was like, yo, you, you need to really check out the show. I'm surprised you guys ain't talking about it. I was like, what are you talking about? He showed me a trailer. I was like, yo, what the freak is this? He's like, it's on Max. I was like, you lying. So I went and put it on my list. And I was like, I had to tell them. I was like, especially for like Melendez. I know he loves Warrior. I know that, you know, I sent that up your alley too. I was like, oh, yeah, this is something we're going to definitely have to check out. people giving the hands and getting them. Yeah, exactly. Did you get a chance to <laughs> yeah, check out the trailer or... How you feeling about it? Or did you get a chance? Whatever you seen on um, first episode took me by surprise. Um, I like how they don't just shadow him. Like I like how they're about to um, like getting everyone else who left. Yeah, yeah like um, the the every, all the characters have a good amount of showtime. Like I like how they're the detectives are now starting to spin and get more involved in the case. Um, it made sense why he fucking spoilers. It made sense why Yeah, you can talk about yeah. Um he appeared dead because uh they gave him the tranquilizer first, then they shot him. Yeah. So it made his heart rate slower. I was like, they pay attention to detail in this yeah, one. Yeah, there's no plot holes so far. No yeah. Nothing. All right, so they, so they, they did their homework and I like mm-hmm. shows like that because it leaves less room for critique and um, criticism. Yep, because like, well, I, well, well, he just made no. They gave him tranquilizer to slow his heart rate down. So when they did touch him, it seemed like it, he, he was dead because his heart rate was slower. Not only that, for people who are into science, if you get shot and you're bleeding out and your heart rate slow, you're less likely to bleed out quicker than if it was pumping fast. Yeah, right. Rate. If you have, uh, yeah, because like if you got like a adrenaline <laughs> shot, your heart will pump faster and pump more blood out and you'll uh, bleed to death. Yeah. So yeah, they did their homework on this one. Um. I, I could have done less with the technology, but the technology makes sense in this case because, like I said, he was trying to hide his family. Yeah, yeah that John was. Yeah, well, you know, so it makes it needs me like Mission Impossible almost. Yeah, but to your point, just to detail, de- de- detail. As soon as you said that, it just reminded me of one of the scenes when um he was out shopping with his family and they were leaving, and he literally took a a towel or something and wipe the store's handle so their fingerprints wouldn't get caught. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, the attention to detail they pay attention to is phenomenal. But yeah. I'm still trying to figure out, like, um, how do they know? They can't just say, like, a warrior spirit. It needs to be some technology-wise. They might release it later to where he's always had a shadow following him, you know, because... Even still, though, like, because even, like, the, the, the first scene is, like, the, he said the same thing. How'd you know... How'd you find me? How'd you know it was me? And he's got like the you know that first thing that reminded me of Mission Impossible with uh, Henry Cavill when he had the little thing in it because they face. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, Cause I actually thought that's how he looked. But <laughs> oh, you thought he was blonde? Yeah, cause, I mean yeah. It, it it looked convincing though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So and that makes sense. Try to blend in or whatever. But the thing about it, he also wait, had it for his kid blonde. That's that's nah. That's, hey, wait a no, minute, no, no, that one is no, no. kid. <laughs> it's, you know, his son had another one too, though. Oh yeah, yeah I was, I was about to say because when they were dead and he, he joint, he saw the thing light up before yeah. it happened because they were dying, I guess. So I guess you know it goes on your heart rate, whatever. But um, yeah, the whole family had it, so they they look like you know kind of like middle aged white family. Yeah. But what I do like is the mythical side of it. When I do, when, when bro was like, and he just, I was like, the fuck? Yeah. 
he just turned dark and it was like so it's like technology with the mr Super so, supernatural yeah I'm, I'm i'm liking it because it's making it like sci-fi for me yeah and i, and I bang with that because I, like, I like yeah oh, we banging yeah we, we bang with that yo <laughs> <laughs> with ninjas <laughs> my, my, my ninja, ninja and Charles. my yeah. ninja yeah so like let y'all guys know we're gonna be watching yeah. that definitely i know and the crazy thing is i, I was a little frustrated too i wish they were pr promoted that more this is a show that definitely needs to be highlighted uh, but it's the same thing they did with Warrior, hence why Horror Warrior I canceled, even though it was one of the best shows on Phone Max. But uh, definitely keep out, you know, let's keep that out. We could definitely review this weekly, it's dropping weekly. So next couple episodes, we'll review on our next uh, episode. Adult Swim is kind of like that, though, isn't it? Adult Swim gets rid of everything good. No, but like, uh, adults, Rick and Morty was Adult Swim, though, right? Yeah. I think so. Still but, is. But, but you got to think, they didn't really promote that, the fans did. And we got to do the same with this one because, like, now they're on like season eight of Rick and Morty or like something like that. Right? Yeah, they just finished yeah. seven, so they're going. To yeah, eight. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need we kind of got to do the same because it's not like a. I, now I've seen it like on Facebook and stuff, but to have like a big thing like a big ad campaign, ad campaign yeah, like yeah, I think Rick and Morty done done Burger King commercials or something like that. Yeah, at this point, yeah, you know what I'm so saying. Good. So, but you got to also look at like who's well. So the guy who's doing this like. I I feel like if it I feel like if it doesn't get legs over here, it doesn't mean it's not gonna get legs back home. So it'll probably be one of those things where because it is dubbed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's probably gonna be one of those things like really get so many dubbed, and then the rest might end up just being like non dubbed. I, I wouldn't mind it either way. It. You know I what I'm saying? Mind it either, but because mm. uh, the guy who's doing this, um, I can't list it right now because we were just watching our overview. But he's done a lot of other animes that I like, like yeah. action wise. Because he's the director who directed action for this one. Uh, so he has a huge gotcha. following. Yeah, so it's That's just a crazy. matter of, like, people over here getting stuff together. Because he's already known over there. You know what I mean? He's like the... Well, I guess John Woo would still be John Woo over there. But he's like John yeah. Woo over <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. He's like Michael Jai White over there. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, that makes sense. That's good. All right, let's go to topic two. Yeah, uh, yeah, Halo yeah. season two, episodes four through five review. Paramount Whoa. Plus. Yeah. All right, baby. Info. Whoa. So Halo 2, uh, Season 2 teases a major event from Halo uh, 5, Guardians setting up a significant colony world for the future of the franchise. A reference of the natural satellite known as uh, Meridian suggests the presence of a uh, forerunner, Guardian, buried beneath the surface connected to the events of Halo 5. So, of course, you know, I, I, have you I watched any Halo? I'm watching it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so but hey, 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 look, look. I, I can talk a little bit with you real quick. I, I, so, the episode reached... Powerful. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. That that one was good. I was like, yo, hey, okay. Did reach this season? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, gonna let, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let Andrew take over. Like, but I want to at least throw my, you know, throw my little, you know, two cent in the bucket. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I did like the acting. The action was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, old dude really pops off like there because the covenant's here. Like, you know, Master Chief was all like, "What's the covenant doing?" Like they're showing up in these places and like way ahead of our intel because like we thought they were coming like. Tuesday, but they were here last Wednesday. Yeah. So, like, it's deep, and, like, and then, yeah, the everything blows up, like, hot action at the beginning and everything. I love Master Chief with no suit on. He yeah, was just, just battling like uh, like one of the creatures. Doing it, you get, like, the big motivational speech from uh, the general guy and everything, like, you know, we got to make this last stand so we can get the people that we can get out, get out, and, you know, if you can stay here, it's, it's kind of D-Day, like, nobody's really going home, but... This is what we got to do because this is the the oath we took, you know. Um, we lose two of the, the main soldiers, or whatever, from the crew, which is kind of rough, you know. But yeah. it's like, but I like I like that um, with the girl. She was just kind of like, get too old for this, <laughs> you know. But because like ever since she kind of like pulled her chip and everything, she's been like feeling like f feeling everything basically because that's like you know half of the thing with like the spines is they have that like inhibitor chip that's like prevent them from like feeling the pain and everything so they just kind of be the relentless warrior and now she's like lagging back um, my only complaint was what's the blind guy doing come on <laughs> I'm gonna fight him I'm drunk and he's like <laughs> he's I get it when, he, when he does the daredevil was like well I can't see him anyway so I just run off <laughs> blow myself up oh, you know, okay. but otherwise I was like you can't see anything. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course, y'all recognize a uh, gentleman from Black Lightning. Uh, he plays, because um, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I forgot to say his uh, his real name. You know, but he has, 
it, what, what's the con- the condition where it's, it's black, but they like really pale, pale skin? You mean albino? Or albino? Like, yeah, okay. Albino-ish. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say. Because, yeah, the guy from Black Lightning, he was the one of the main villains mm-hmm. um, in Black Lightning, and yeah. he was uh, albino or whatever like that. He's in, he's in this Halo yeah. show. All right, is he all um, white or patches of white? He's all white. Oh, oh, he's albino. Yeah, he's albino. Yeah, albino. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know. I haven't seen it, so yeah, I'm not making sure. Yeah, no. Albino, then it's been a yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but yeah, the action is just exceptional. Yeah. I do like that. It, it, to the me, story building too. Like they have like there's so much. Like I don't know who Master Chief can trust right now. Like it's so crazy because like the way they're like piecing in like these flashbacks or foreshadowing or whatever with you know um, because they like patch them up at times and everything and like. We can't trust homegirl because, like, she, you know. Can't never trust these women out here. You can't trust this guy. You know, Ackerson, they're like, he seemed like he was, like, the new general. He was going to come in. and was (laughs) streets. You know, like, he's going to, you know, turn over a new leaf because they took out the other girl. No. He's dirty. Like, everybody's dirty. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I I really think that this season they really upped the up the ante. Um, I really felt like the production quality went up a little bit more as well as including uh, stronger writing, um, and and a new show direct direction. I mean, of course. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, go ahead. I feel like they maybe took some of the feedback they got from the first season that in like certain directions, like all right, well, let's build out. If we're gonna go this way, like let's build out the characters, get that character development more instead of just throwing Master Chief like robot mode keep the helmet on and like you know canonically judge dread it kind of thing we're like well, yeah why not well i mean and why I'm, not have carl urban play john 117 right i love you know we love carl urban but i would say um oh okay yeah, yeah. okay all right um but yeah i mean we still got audio so yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah um, but yeah, I, I just felt I just felt like um, I felt like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I felt yes. like what we're able to experience when it actually comes to um, what actually comes to Halo. Um, I think that we can actually see a more brighter future when it actually comes yeah. to this franchise. When it actually comes, to I, I, I like the character development like aspect of it, like what, how they're doing it. So, I'm gotcha. Yes, board. sir. Definitely. All right, let's go to topic three, Abbott Elementary Season 3, Episodes 3 through 5, Review. All right, info. After a student is caught smoking, the staff comes together to revamp the outdated drug policy. Janine tries to prep the new uh, substitute teacher for her class, but finds it challenging to give up for her uh, her formal role. Tensions rise when, with, when Barbara's church choir takes over the gym for rehearsals, catching Ava's attention. As Ava delives deeper into the dynamics of the choir, she uncovers uh, simmering tensions and conflicts that threaten to boil over. This show is on. I don't know what. I'm glad this you guys got a chance to, to catch up on uh, on some Abbott, uh, so we can definitely talk guys. about. I passed out last night. <laughs> you were, uh, I watched uh, <laughs> half an episode of Ninja Kamui and I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Stephen, are you watching Abbott or no? Abbott um, Elementary. Hell uh, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. This show is funny. Is funny as hell. I know. A rat, A R A B. Nah. Close enough. <laughs> nah, um, nah. This this show is funny as hell. Like every scene is something stupid from what's happening in the forefront and also what's happening in the background. The punchlines are great. <laughs> it's always something like the writers are really phenomenal with this damn show. Cause like I said, it's never a dull moment. Every scene is fucking hilarious. Like yo, <laughs> and it has a lot of heart too. It has a lot yeah, of heart, yeah. man. I know, yeah. but but it goes right. It's like splits. Like it, it, you know, have a heart to heart. Second later, boom, hit you with something funny. Yeah. <laughs> boom, it's like, damn, this is good. Like it keeps. And I, I never thought that I would enjoy this show. But I Damn heard the, good show. I, I heard the uh, rumors. So I was like, yo, let me yeah. check this out. Yeah. I was glued. <laughs> I binge binge watched the first two seasons, bro. Like, it's it's just that stupid and funny, but it, it's still wholesome to where my kids can watch it. Yeah. What you, you think what about it, Keith? So, yeah, yeah, yeah I like it, Andrew. How you feel? Yeah, so I just <laughs> binge to catch up with just the current season. Gotcha. So, like, I. I have like enough of the characters, but like I, I'm, de- I'm gonna go back and watch the first two so I can. You get, like, the full, the full have a, uh, <laughs> you know? 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be crazy. The full they got, some, like, they got some. They got some good like dynamics going with uh, um, Janine there at the district, like trying to do her thing, and but also like, but she still cares about her kids, mm -hmm. and, like, class, and everything else. You know, so she checks in like, what's the sub of the week doing? And then the girl's like, yeah, you know, I taught at all the schools, Jefferson. Roosevelt, McKinley. You just name him president. Yo, that's all was funny. Like jokes and everything. That I forgot what her name is. That sub though, because that is actually her persona. Because I seen her in another movie and she's just like that. So I was like, <gasps> she's in here. Oh my god, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm, she got I'm a little bit of like the, not quite a deadpan, but like a, a subtle okay. delivery. Yeah, which was funny. Yeah, and then almost the, like a dry yeah, and the, sub. And the, <laughs> Yeah, the Air 2.0 for... is, is, is fake. Oh, yeah, fake. <laughs> it's like, y'all said so. Uh. Yeah. And I was like, yo, get to him. What you doing, bro? And he got, he was getting high. Yeah, and it came back like, out. I was like, say no to drugs. Yeah, like, yeah. Just... Yeah. And then they brought up the, the, um, the Indian girl. who was, I remember her from uh, corporate. Yeah. Funny. yeah, yeah. And she comes out just like, drugs are bad. <laughs> Don't do any drugs. Sobriety's great. Everything is flat. Like everything the kids are like. Well, no, some drugs so are good. Are you saying some drugs are good? No, no, all cigarette. No, cigarettes are great. Oh, no, wait. Just, just don't do drugs, kids. Yeah. Just, just, we had to do one. Like which one? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's just. Yo, PSA, like, oh my God. PSA. And no one here is sponsoring this but me. But weed's not a drug. End of PSA. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Barack Obama yeah. and I approve this message. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, it, and then the other uh, sub, a uh, Janine sub, she was like, Jessica? I just like to make decisions. And like, oh, that's not how we do things here. <laughs> <It's> like, just, <laughs> bro, I have a problem, I'll let you know, but I don't. No, I don't. Like, yeah, well, it's crazy, so <laughs> Yo, I mean, we can oh, just go I, I'm not doing this sub thing. It's mid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember, remember when she came yeah, in and she was like, mid. oh, this your class? All right. Well, I guess it's about time over. No, 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 no. no. I got it. No, no. Like, <laughs> she was like, okay, but well, then you can leave then since you're not going to, you're not staying. I don't understand what's happening yeah. here. Like, bro, I, I, think, I think eventually she's going to come back. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's going to have to, you know what I mean? Right. So, Yo, they got my boy from uh, Dagon, was it Punisher? Uh, he's on the, um, you, you saw him. He was on the, um, shoot. Uh, no, I'm talking about the show from Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about, right? The, yeah, uh, the Puerto Rican guy. He, yeah, you know, yeah, he's in. He's uh, he's playing nice. Oh no, no, he was an Arrow. My fault. He was not a part of the show. Oh, okay. He was an Arrow. Um, the actual show Arrow. Uh, he was actually supposed to be the nice guy and ended up turning bad or whatever like that. Puerto Rican. Did you see Arrow? Uh, the, the last like forever ago. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I haven't seen the last season. Like I stopped watching when they got to the crossover event the first time. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, but yeah, they got my boy. You know, what I'm saying he's helping. He helped basically recruit uh, Janine. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, the little trio of people at the district. That, like, yeah, they're actually yeah, related they're like, to her. The NPR host, like, yeah. So yeah, they have no background in education. They just got the job. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yo, and I'm trying to think. Oh, oh um, well, her her ex boyfriend popped up again. Tyree. So, so he was like, yeah, yeah but he got my little son. He was my like, y'all bet your son. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call him my my because you know I'm, I'm dating his mom. Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, I Yo, we gotta find out what's really going. Cause I'm like. Yeah. Nah, something it's something going on with that because his mom he, getting clapped. Yeah, supposedly yeah, he's, on, he's on the couch. Supposedly, <laughs> he, he always uh, over exaggerates or something. Yeah. Something for the story is missing that we don't know yeah, nothing right, about. Right. <laughs> we should that start little, PTA exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not starting a parent. Yeah, Tyreek Elias. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but yeah, the, the, yeah, Abbott is, is is absolutely funny. So definitely uh, check that out. Um, and then of course we're gonna go ahead and review the last thing in our se segment. Um, oh, actually, no, it's not. We got two. Let's hurry up. Uh, topic four: Avid, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender season one review. So, uh, Netflix uh, info setting uh, Aztec. Setting as am I saying that right? As as certain as what Asiatic Asiatic war torn world. Where certain people can bend one of the four classical elements, water, earth, those, fire, or bending? air. Aang is the avatar, <laughs> the only one capable of bending all the elements and, and is destined to bring peace to the world from the fire nation. Bending. Yeah. Bend. Is you doing that, the bending? That is a false statement. Because check this out. Check it. Every time I roll a blunt, slow it down. 
can't hear me. Every time I roll a blunt, I bend all four elements. You heard me? I bend the earth when I roll the grass. I bend the fire when I light the match. I bend in the air when I take a puff. And you gotta lick the blunt over when I bend the water. You know what I mean? Avatar. Ah, uh, snaps. Two snaps. Two snaps. Poetry, 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 poetry yeah. slam. You ain't know we were talented, did you? Funny. You ain't know we were talented. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get let's get to the um, let's get to the root. I the avatar. It's funny. Let's let's get into the root of the situation. The blunt avatar. I don't understand what uh, other fans are complaining about. This this show is phenomenal. I actually absolutely Bitch love needs something to say. The to acting. Talk about. Um, I felt like the Haters. first. Op- I mean, look, first opening minutes. Uh, you got an earthbender that turns the ground into like a moon crater. Like, freak out of here, bro. Boy. Junk's crazy. Um, I love how because you know, of course, as you guys know, we don't normally do Netflix shows because you know we ain't, we're not. I can't f- watch all these. You know, try Netflix to watch the whole season. Netflix can't pay us. You funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I what I will say is that from everything that I have seen collectively, I mean, it's it's, it's a home run for me. It's one of the tw- top fifteen best Netflix shows that's out. You know, what I'm saying twenty um, five. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, top ten. I mean, you know, what I'm saying 10. yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. Thirty five. Um, and they got a lot of shows, but I mean, not all their shows hit. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what I'm saying. But a lot, how a lot, you lot, lot of about, strikeouts. What you say last seven? So I have like no reference on like the Airbender canon and everything, but like watching that first episode before we played Tekken yesterday, um, the show's well done. Like everybody's playing their parts well. Like it's good casting, good wor- world building. Um, I like the space cow. Yeah, Sky Bison. Let's so. go. Uh, you seen anything of it, Steven? Uh, last Airbender? Yeah, the only thing I've seen was none they of it. They can't hear you. The only thing I've seen was none of it. Whatever. All yeah, right. no, it's, 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 it's pretty dope, though, man. Like, um, yeah, it's all right. You're funny. The young boy, he he did, he did a great job playing. I mean, I, I like the cast around him that's uh, supporting him. Yeah, all right. But, uh, the, uh, the Asian, um, what's her name? That, that he, she was like, uh, what's, what's his name with the... With the with the with the, the, boat, with the, with the stick that be with him, he ain't gonna he can't bend. Oh, you talking about uh, soccer? Yeah, yeah. And then you know they had their little thing yeah, just I, in episode two and stuff like that. Oh. I, I like the dynamic. I like the slow build, but I also like the respect to the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like she, yeah, you could tell when some people actually took their role a lot you know, more seriously, and then some people that just choreographed. Yeah. I feel like you know, saying the people, the, the the cast around her, they took, they probably took their classes a lot more seriously. The fighting the dynamics was more streamlined, not just yeah, because the airbending styles. It was more yeah, yeah. yeah, actual martial arts styles. Yeah, um, like three counts. Matter of fact, we were just talking about that. Well, Iron mm-hmm. Fist, right? Yeah. A lot of that to me, besides my girl, um, That's what my what's life. her name? You know, <laughs> um, her but, name is Mrs. Robinson. I, I remember that. her. I don't remember her. Made in legal name, yeah. but we you don't remember marrying marry her. And my baby was just in a movie um, not too long ago, Underwater. You know, I, su- I support I support my 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 uh, wife from afar. Yeah, but besides that, but Iron Fist, you funny. But Iron Fist, you, it's a lot of them just seemed like genres. it was just you funny. It just seemed it just seemed more just robotic. Probably it life. wasn't like. <laughs> get real serious, you know what I'm saying? In Iron Fist, so I mean that's why I like how they deal with this one. For what you're saying, how you felt? Um. For what I've seen, um, because I haven't seen the whole season yet, it probably going to, because depending on what the fans that you're saying are are complaining about, the only few minor things I can see from, like, the first episode is that it's not directly (coughs) in line with the cartoon show. And I can see, although some characters don't, like, Iroh, I'll give you an example. Iroh's my boy from the cartoon, like, He's one of the coolest dudes, you know what I mean? And he's still cool in the live action, but it's just something about, like, it's not the same type of cool. Because, like, in the anime, in the he's cartoon. Cooler. Well, kind of, because, like, he comes across as, like, you like when I see him in the anime, it's like, oh, man, you don't want to mess with this dude because he's about it, but he's <laughs> such a bro dude about it. Like, he's calm and cool and charismatic because he knows he could probably level you. Yeah. From what I, I, got, see I got so hands. far, like in this one, the dude's calm, he's cool, but I don't feel like, even though I know, 
Because I know what I know. He could probably dust me. But like watching the show, I'd be like, man, I roll this old fool. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll bust gotcha. it, You know what I mean? But so it might be things like that. But it's just like minor like character traits and stuff. But I have to see the rest of the season to see how it flows out. Gotcha. All right. We're going to close out the episode with topic five. Last one. Shogun. Episodes one through two. Uh, I ain't going to necessarily read the info. It's on Hulu uh, and, of course, FX. Uh, right now, it, this show is just incredible. We have gotten the riches of rich when it comes to the geek community. This show starting off like rich, man. Like, it, it is, I don't know. It's just like Samurai's at its, at, at its greatest form right now. You know what I'm saying? On, on tele, I'm talking about live right now on television. Like, this Samurai in its greatest form. Like, it, the introduction of how the structure and how they're playing chess and how old, you know, so of course yeah, we talk about the new from, from uh, John things. Wick and from uh, the new Mortal Kombat, yeah, yeah. my my boy, uh, he's you know be, being strategic. He's not you know so he's oh. the main character in this one. Yeah, he's one of the wow. main characters. Yeah. It's like yeah, so it's like he's. I mean, if, like so, you know how Game of Thrones, yeah, Jon Snow, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's Rob, like that. It's, like, it's, it's like a setup like huge that. main cast. Yep, yep. Main and cast he, he's there. one of the main cast. So and you can just tell. I mean, some people are eager like well, we need to attack, and he's just like chill, man. Chill, man. I got a plan. What you right. doing, bro? I, I'm, I'm thinking, he's, he's thinking long smart. term. He, Y'all want to try to chop off heads now. He's like, why are you going to do that? I could, I could cut off the generation, bro. Like, That's an example of an old guy who's smooth, but you know will still fuck you up. <laughs> if I saw a dude at a bar or an alleyway right now, I'd be like, yo, he's got it. He could probably take my wallet. I'm going to just go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. From what you've seen so far, how are you feeling? Yeah, I like it. Um, John Blackstone, whatever the, that character, the um, Portuguese pro, or English Protestant, you know, merchant, and everything else like that. Like, I think he's killing it. Um, you know, obviously everybody else is doing great. Like the the setup and everything, all the character building arcs and exposition to set the stage is very well done. Um, yeah, it's a great cast. A lot of faces, familiar faces. A lot of um, yeah, just good building. Like I watched the first episode. I'll call it native, just because like everybody's speaking, you know, traditional Japanese or whatever, you know. And then I watched the second episode with the English dub, which like it was easier to follow and like keep up with. Cause it's a lot of reading the subtitles, yeah. but um, but it's like it's it's not bad, like because it's most of the actors dubbing themselves or whatever, just reading their lines in English, so it works out pretty good. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, Steve, I know you probably got a chance to check up on that. So, uh, did no, you I actually any- did. Just oh, okay. to be- but, you know, he said I can't prepare today. Yeah, don't play me. So it's take off slow Big for Jack. me. I don't like it. Oh yeah, you, you know, like nah, this is pretty dope. Man. Oh, okay. Nah, yeah. I just like um, it's 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 starting off slow, cut to get the politics of it. It's, it's so, world building. Yeah, so it can make sense like in a later episode. So I kind of figured they was going to try to go this route instead of just banging your head with action the first five scenes. Uh, no, but I think it's gonna lead up to like a big war. Then like, like I say, Game of Thrones, Star Saw, everybody, you know each clan, know the politics of where they stand. Then that's when the uh, the trickery and all the mischievousness is gonna start turning, yeah. and people gonna start killing <coughs> secret people and then trying to, like you know what I'm saying? Like it's plot. It's plot is good. You, if you took that out, it would be like you could probably still get all the same sensation from the accents and stuff, and you could probably later on piece of who these people, why are they doing this, why are they doing that, but the fact that they got all that out the way. Yeah, it leaves no holes now. Yeah, exactly. leaving, yeah and, so. you're, and you can enjoy it, just take off from that. Absolutely. All right, so we definitely round it out, man. We appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll check you out on Question Bag. All right, thank Peace you. Love and hair grease. All right, yeah. Spectacular, all right, uh, Spectacular Radio. Uh-huh, yeah. All right, yeah. So do we just get Prince since he's right there and tell him about the video? Yeah, we got to tell him about the video. Question bag. I'm gonna say, uh, Andrew did it. He consistently <laughs> knocked it out. <laughs> he probably, in, uh, he probably in the studio. Yeah, he right over there. Oh, he right over there. Oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna let him know what's going on. You started to be flat, but I'm gonna get a little bit because I gotta refresh my wallet. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna, drink it. I'm gonna change my shirt real quick. So they be like, oh, you got a new shirt on. Oh, you don't like your, uh, what you gonna call it, uh. Ice Cube cosplay? You funny. On Friday? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> How you fuck on your day off, Crip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow, wow. You good?